Mansour Maliki has called Sheikh Uthman ibn Farouk a pathological liar. And after examining some of Sheikh Uthman's claims, I don't think that's an exaggeration. Mansour is one of several Muslims who've been exposing Sheikh Uthman for lying about Islam in order to appease his American audience and for being friendly towards non-Muslims. But while we all certainly respect the honesty and integrity of the Muslims who keep exposing Sheikh Uthman for lying, we can't stop wondering why they're exposing Sheikh Uthman. The reason we don't understand why Muslims like Mansour keep exposing Sheikh Uthman's lies is that we think the Muslim sources promote deception in certain cases. In other words, we think that when Sheikh Uthman lies to us in order to conceal his true intentions, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do according to the Quran and Muhammad and Muhammad's companions. But this would mean that when Muslims like Mansour expose his lies, they're actually going against the teachings of Islam. But we could be wrong here, and we are open to correction. So I said yesterday that I had one more question for Mansour. My question is about Takiya. When most Muslims think of Takiya, they think of situations where someone is going to kill you for being a Muslim or for being from the wrong sect of Islam, and so you deny being a Muslim or deny being from the wrong sect of Islam. Lying in these cases is permissible in Islam. But there are other situations where lying is permissible, and as I'm reading the Quran and commentaries, Sheikh Uthman seems to be justified in Islam when he deceives us. Let me go through a verse of the Quran and a commentary so everyone knows what I'm talking about, and then I'll ask Mansur if he can clear this up for us. Surah 3, verse 28 of the Quran. Let not the believers take disbelievers for their friends in preference to believers. Whoso doeth that hath no connection with Allah, unless it be that ye but guard yourselves against them, taking, as it were, security. Allah biddeth you beware only of himself unto Allah is the journeying. So, don't take non-Muslims as friends instead of Muslims. If you do, you have no connection with Allah, unless it's to guard yourselves against the non-Muslims. This sounds like it's saying, don't be friends with non-Muslims unless you're in a situation where being friends with them could help protect you. Notice, there's nothing in this verse about pretending not to be a Muslim. This verse is about pretending to be friendly instead of hostile. Let's read Ibn Kathir's commentary on this verse. The prohibition of supporting the disbelievers. Allah prohibited his believing servants from becoming supporters of the disbelievers or to take them as comrades with whom they develop friendships rather than the believers. Allah warned against such behavior when he said, and whoever does that will never be helped by Allah in any way. Meaning, whoever commits this act that Allah has prohibited, then Allah will discard him. So Allah will discard Muslims who become friends with non-Muslims. Similarly, Allah said, O you who believe, take not my enemies and your enemies as friends, showing affection towards them until, and whosoever of you does that, then indeed he has gone astray from the straight path. Surah 60, verse 1. Allah said, O you who believe, take not for friends disbelievers instead of believers. Do you wish to offer Allah a manifest proof against yourselves? Surah 4, verse 144. And, O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as friends, they are but friends of each other. And whoever befriends them, then surely he is one of them. Surah 5, verse 51. Allah said, after mentioning the fact that the faithful believers gave their support to the faithful believers among the Muhajirin, Ansar, and Bedouins, and those who disbelieve are allies of one another. And if you do not behave the same, there will be fitna and oppression on the earth and a great mischief and corruption. Surah 8, verse 73. So, don't be friends with non-Muslims. But there's an exception. Allah said next, unless you indeed fear a danger from them, Meaning, accept those believers who, in some areas or times, fear for their safety from the disbelievers. In this case, such believers are allowed to show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, al-Bukhari recorded that Abu Ad-Darda said, We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Al-Bukhari said that Al-Hasan said, The Tukya, i.e. Tukiya, is allowed until the day of resurrection. So, let's think about the situation Sheikh Uthman is in giving dawah in California.
Sheikh Uthman has admitted that his goal is to subjugate the entire world, force all non-Muslims to pay jizya, and enslave the wives and children of anyone who refuses to pay. That's his goal, he admitted it. But is it a good idea for him to announce his plans to non-Muslims? Of course not. He would end up on multiple watch lists. His listeners would be more hostile towards him if they knew he was plotting to enslave their wives and children. Telling the truth would mess up his dawah. So, even though he's hostile towards non-Muslims, and you can see this when he interacts with non-Muslims, he loves to call them names and insult and degrade them, even though he wants to subjugate and enslave non-Muslims, he could fear for his safety from the disbelievers because he's living in a non-Muslim country and is massively outnumbered by non-Muslims. What's he supposed to do then? Well, he's allowed to show friendship outwardly, but never inwardly. He's allowed to smile in our faces while cursing us in his heart. He's allowed to pretend to be friendly. He's allowed to pretend to be peaceful. He's allowed to deceive us. So, what should he do when people start circulating a tweet where he admits that he wants to subjugate and enslave us? Well, he could claim that his words were taken out of context, as he did when he was originally asked about his tweet during a live stream. So, so yeah, what happened is some dude on Twitter, some troll, I don't know who he is, um, but made a bunch of comments saying that I don't believe in Jihad Talab and I've denied that there is Jihad Talab and this kind of things. And what I said is that I have clarified these views and what I said, and what I said, and what I said, and what I said, people have mis construed that by cutting off the top part of the commentary. We have Durus and we're going to have in Zad al-Mustakniya and which is what I said in those part, in the part of the comments that people cut off as well. And which is what I said, and which is what I said, and which is what I said, and which is what I said. If the context defense doesn't work, he can just say that someone else posted it. So that tweet was not from me personally. It was from my Twitter account, right? Somebody who volunteered to take care of the Twitter account made that post. And as I disapproved of it, he deleted it. Uh -huh. As far as I can tell then, when Sheikh Uthman lies about his agenda, when he lies about what Islam teaches, when he lies about the Quran, when he lies about the Hadith, when he lies about the commentaries, when he lies about Muslim scholars, as long as he's doing it to deceive us about his agenda, he's perfectly in line with the teachings of Muhammad. That's how things seem to me. So I don't find it at all surprising when Sheikh Uthman lies to my face and when his followers cheer him on for it. But Mansoor and a number of other Muslims disagree. They believe that Sheikh Uthman is doing something terribly wrong when he lies about Islam. So they clearly have a different understanding of what's permissible here. They're clearly interpreting the Quran and commentaries differently from the way I interpret them and from the way Sheikh Uthman interprets them. So my question to Mansoor is, why is it wrong, according to Islam, for Sheikh Uthman to deceive his listeners and keep them completely clueless about his true intentions in order to protect himself and his community? What is he doing wrong here? Why should he be honest when being honest would ruin his dawah and get him into trouble with the authorities? I look forward to reading your response, Mansoor, and thank you again for responding. I know that answering my questions gets you into trouble with Sheikh Uthman's fans. I'm glad you don't seem to care when they harass you.